caregiving is relentless. It is exhausting beyond belief and caregivers need a break. So it's a way for people to get a break and drop their loved one off in a safe environment, be well taken care of again so they can go tend to their other duties. Talking with people about how to have a great retirement. This is the Rock Your Retirement Show. We don't talk about money, but we talk about almost everything else you need to rock your retirement. Now, here's your host, Kathy Klein. Welcome to Rock Your Retirement. This is the show where we talk about retirement lifestyle. We don't talk about money, but we talk about everything else that you need to know before you retire. But if you're already retired, don't worry. We've got information for you also. Now, if you've reviewed the show on iTunes, we greatly appreciate it. This helps us grow the show and it helps us get the information out to more people. Our guest for today is Lisa Tyberski, and Lisa began her career as an account representative for Unum Life Insurance Company, and the really cool thing is, is that the long-term care insurance that I purchased way back when is with Unum, so we have a connection there. Lisa has a passion for helping families affected by Alzheimer's, since her mother and her aunt both suffered from the disease. She knows all too well that caring for a person with dementia is physically, emotionally, and also financially challenging. The demands of day-to-day care, changing family roles, and difficult decisions about placement in a care facility can be very difficult to handle. She's actively involved in the Walk to End Alzheimer's and has raised thousands of dollars for the Alzheimer's Association. Her role is to help families in the community learn about the valuable resources and wonderful care provided at the Glenner Centers. She earned a Bachelor's of Art degree in economics at the College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts. Did I pronounce that right, Lisa? (laughs) Uh, No, it's Worcester. Thank you. I I know. (laughs) I know. I'm a West Coast girl. I knew I was pronouncing it wrong. (laughs) And she's, That's okay. That's thank you, okay. thank you. She's been married for 25 years and has three children. So, Lisa, welcome to the show. Thanks for helping me pronounce. How do you say it again? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Worcester, Massachusetts. Thank you, thank you so much for helping me pronounce <laughs> that. I'm terrible at those kind of things. <laughs> That's so, okay. That's okay. It's like people out here, you know, or if you're not from here, you call it, uh, you call La Jolla La Jolla, right? Yeah, La Jolla. Yeah, like because you're jolly. La Jolla, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to share our information today. Well, I'm so excited too. And let me tell you why. So my dad has Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and people who've listened to the show for a while already know that. I had no idea that there were places like Glenner. And for my listeners, Lisa's going to tell you all about it, but I just want to give you a quick introduction. So there are places out there called adult daycare centers, and I hate that name. I don't know what we can do about changing that name, but I hate it. But what they do is not only do they help conserve your family funds, your family resources, but even better, your family member, in my opinion gets better care than when they have one-on-one, you know, non-medical hope, uh, health or, you know, people coming to your house to sit with your parent while you go to work. And my father-in-law had a one-on-one care person. I'm not saying that all one-on-one care is bad. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that most people who do the one-on-one care, they don't have programs. They're not, um, you know, they, they're... They're not helping your family member stay mentally active. And that's what I like about adult daycare centers. It's they've got socialization and they have active programs. Did I explain that right, Lisa? You did. You did. And I'm I'm glad you started off with that because a lot of people have no idea that adult daycare is an option. I don't like that name either, to be honest. So at the Glenner, we actually call them adult day programs. Adult day programs. I love that. Yeah, we say adult day program because, you know, you're right. As soon as you say adult daycare, people think little kids. And, I mean, we're talking about grown adults, and they don't want any part of adult daycare, right? So so you're right. The name is, is a deterrent a lot of the time. But 
But yeah, I did not know when we were caring for my mom and she lived back east. So, um, you know, I wasn't here in San Diego looking at resources, but I had no idea that a specialized day program for people with Alzheimer's existed. And I think that is the, the struggle that I have and why I'm so thankful that you have me on the show because it does exist. And um, I often call the Glenham Center a hidden gem in San Diego because once people find out about us and find out about what we can offer, they're just, they're thrilled. They're absolutely thrilled to be able to have this as a resource. What is it? How does it work? So how it works is we have three facilities in San Diego. I should should start off and, and say that. So we have three centers in San Diego, we call them. And they are located in Encinitas, Hillcrest, and Chula Vista, by the way. But basically what they are is they it is a, a facility. Sometimes people get confused and they say, okay, so you come to our house and do activities. No, they're actual facilities. And people will drop off their loved one during the day, Monday through Friday, nine to five. And they'll be cared for during the day while their adult child or their spouse you know, goes to work, run errands, take a nap, go to the doctor, whatever you need to do to tend to the other areas of your life. Because as you had mentioned earlier, caregiving is, it's relentless. It is exhausting beyond belief if you've ever gone through it. And caregivers need a break. They need a break. So it's a way for people to get a break and drop their loved one off in a safe environment, be well taken care of again so they can go tend to their other duties. I'm so glad that you're here talking about the Glenner Center. Tell me, how did the Glenner get started? Well, actually, the Glenner Center was founded in 1982 by Dr. Glenner and his wife, Joy Glenner. Uh, Dr. Glenner was a researcher at the UCSD School of Medicine, and um, he was working on, you know, trying to advance research in the Alzheimer's field. He was actually the researcher that discovered the beta amyloid protein that is in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. So he was world renowned for for that discovery. Uh, But the reason that he opened the Glenner Centers is um, there's quite a story that goes along with that. One night, um, gosh, probably around midnight, he and Joy received a phone call from the husband of one of Dr. Glenner's Alzheimer's patients. So the, the wife had Alzheimer's disease and the husband was taking care of her and he was frantic. He was absolutely at the end of his rope and he had a loaded gun in his hand. He was actually going to murder his wife and commit suicide. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, I mean, it just, you know, we're, we're talking about caregiver stress and um, how how difficult it is. And that's certainly an understatement because this man at the time, I mean, his his mindset was that he really, he thought that was the only way out. He um, he was just struggling so so much. So he called Dr. Glenner, um, you know, in this in this frenzy, and and um, luckily Joy Glenner was able to have the call traced. They called the police, and they were able to stop a murder suicide. So the next day, they thought, oh my gosh, we've got to do something for these these caregivers and and take care of the people that that are you know caring for this population so it's a it's a pretty powerful story and and then you know Dr. Glenner with his research and his discovery of the beta amyloid was so incredible but then they turned their focus on to um, caring for the caregivers so that's how that's how we were founded so it's a again a pretty powerful story I like to share that just to to let people know just how difficult it is to care for someone with Alzheimer's that is an incredible story thank you for sharing it now, there, there are these types of facilities outside of San Diego, right? Because I do have listeners that are in different parts of the country. Um, so how would they, and, and of course, I know about Glenner, um, people in San Diego, not everybody. I mean, I'm glad you're on the show. But how would somebody who isn't in San Diego find out about a place like Glenner where they live? They would probably call, they could Google, of course, adult daycare centers, you know, specialized adult daycare centers. They could call the Alzheimer's Association, their local chapter. They usually have a list of all of the the, uh, well-respected resources in the community that specialize in dementia. So that would be a way to start. Okay. I'm glad you asked that too, because not all day centers are created equal. There's, there are a lot of daycare centers that are big, a hundred people in a room in a church, for example, which might work for some people. For us, our specialty is Alzheimer's and dementia. For us, that is um, not how we do things. Our centers are smaller. 
We're licensed for uh, 30 people in our two of us down in Sanita Center and 24 in Hillcrest. And we keep it smaller and more intimate on purpose so that our participants, as we call them, we, we refer to them as partic- participants rather than patients, are not overwhelmed. So, again, we, we, we specialize. Now, to find a center like that in another area of the country, again, you would, you know, probably call the Alzheimer's Association, you know, or or um, there might be some placement agencies, too, that sometimes are. They usually would refer people to communities, residential communities, but some placement agencies might know about local daycare centers. One of the things, too, that you brought that up, uh, the Glenner Center is actually, you were the first nonprofit adult day health care program um, in the nation, actually, back in 1982, and Dr. Glenn and Joy uh, started our centers. And um, we are still the only nonprofit dementia-specific adult day health program in San Diego. So um, that's an important, important feature. Okay. So the Glenner is specifically for Alzheimer's. So you're saying that there are other adult day programs that would be non-dementia? Or are most of them for people yeah, with dementia? Yeah, there's a lot of day. Yeah, a lot of day. A lot of daycare programs will they will care for people with dementia, which you know, which is great. Uh, but they don't necessarily specialize or only treat people with with dementia. And I'm saying dementia too because we are the the Glenner Alzheimer's Family Centers, but we do care for people with Parkinson's dementia, for example, um, Lewy body dementia, um, frontal temporal dementia. So. It is not just Alzheimer's. I do want to clarify that for your listeners. But yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. A lot of daycare centers are not specialized in just in dementia. So that is kind of an important, important thing to note. Yeah, I think that if you're taking your family member to an adult day center and they have dementia, I think it's important to take them somewhere where they have knowledge in that specific condition. <laughs> I mean, because well, and that's what I love too. And you know, having gone through it in my family, and I I know what it's like to be you know the the adult daughter, the oldest adult daughter in that situation. And there's just there's so much emotion that goes along with first of all with just the disease in general, or knowing that your loved one has the disease. Then second of all, you're trying to find care for for your parent, and you feel guilty about that because you feel like you should be able to do it yourself. You don't want to have to put them into a residential community, but yet you're completely stressed out. You need some help and you need some relief. So again, that's why a daycare center is just such an such an incredible uh, option. What, what do they do in a daycare? So center? yeah, so during the day we do keep everybody uh, active and engaged. Uh, we don't force them to, of course. I mean, we are you know very respectful. These are grown adults we're we're talking about, and if they if they don't want to participate in the activity, that's completely fine. But we do try to keep them in, engaged and keep their brain, their brain active. We'll do current events. We do lots of music uh, a couple times a day. We have the Humane Society bring pets in uh, once or twice a month. That's uh, very therapeutic for our participants. And then, you know, just a lot of, uh, again, a lot of music, a lot of singing, a lot of, you know, kind of brain stimulating activities. And we try to gear it towards our group you know, depending on the the cognitive function of the group. So we have an activity director in each center that comes up with activities um, for every day. And all of the activities are, they, they stay in the center, right? They don't go out? Yeah, we have little outside areas outside of our center where they can get some fresh air, but uh, but primarily they're inside. Primarily okay. they're inside. Okay, that's, that's yeah. good. So, yeah, great. They're doing things. You know, they're not sitting there watching TV. Yeah, and what you had mentioned when we first started talking is one-on-one care is fabulous and can be very fabulous for for some people. They don't want to go, you know, into a, a situation where they're with a, a bunch of people and they want to stay home. That can be that can be very very helpful, and there are a lot of excellent home care agencies out there. But bringing them to a day center, like I said, it, it keeps them active and engaged rather than just with one person. Maybe, you know, the the person could be the best caregiver on the planet, but it's only one person. So when you do come to the daycare center, you're socializing and, and yeah, we're doing the activities, but just the interaction with other people is really, really helpful for people with dementia. It's really good to stay engaged and be among, be among your peers. I think it's helpful for everybody. Everybody needs socialization, right? Everybody. Yeah. And it can be very, you know, as you age in general, it can be very lonely and there's, you know, a high incidence of, of just loneliness and depression among that 
population. And, and again, just staying home with one caregiver, again, not to, uh, you know, diminish the importance of home care because it's awesome, but, but daycare just sort of offers that, that extra socialization. And uh, then when the person comes home at night, um, you probably are familiar with this. There's a syndrome called uh, sundowner syndrome where people with dementia tend to get very agitated and irritated in the evening hours. So if during the day they're active and engaged and, and socializing, they come home more tired and it helps to reduce the incidence of sundowning in the evening. And you can also, and I love the fact that, and I didn't realize that um, socialization and activities helped with that. So thanks for pointing that out. But I also wanted to let the listeners know that you can use one-on-one caregiving in conjunction with adult day uh, programs, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm glad you brought that up. We we do have home care agencies that will uh, come into the home and feed the the person with dementia breakfast, help get them dressed. Um, you know, that's often a difficult task for the family member who's trying to get their kids ready for school or get to work themselves. It can, you know, it can be an effort to get the the person with dementia ready. So they will come in in the morning for, say, you know, two to four hours, depending on what their whole shift requirement is, and then bring them to our day center for a half a day. It isn't required that people come for a full day to our center. They can come for a half day. And then they sort of plug in that socialization piece into the day, you know, into their 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 care plan, and then pick them up at the end of the day and bring them home, make dinner, and, and you know, change them uh, you know, change their clothes at the end of the day and all that. So yeah, there are a lot of home care agencies or opportunities for home care agencies to plug in a little bit of socialization in the daycare center during the day. So yeah, and then it's better for everybody. You know, you have, you have the one-on-one care in the morning and in the evening, helping get people up and dressed and, and fed. And then at night helping, you know, with dinner and washing up and then going to bed. And so you can still do both. You know, you, you you can. There's opportunity for both. Absolutely. And what it does too is is you know we haven't talked about cost yet, but um, our day program and mo- most day programs are they're going to be probably the most cost effective professional care option that you will find. I mean, short of doing your, it yourself, which is which is free, but it it takes such a toll on your health as a caregiver. Um, so a professional care option or the most cost-effective professional care option would be um, an adult daycare program. You know, residential communities are awesome too. They they are needed. There does come a time when they are absolutely needed, but, you know, this is a, a much more reasonably priced option if they're not quite ready. So how much does it cost about? So so this is a... Um an evergreen podcast. So somebody might li- be listening to this five years from now. So I just want to mention that we're talking in 2017 and prices can change. But um, so about what is it right now? For the Glenner right now, it is $95 a day for eight hours of care and $65 a day for four hours. So eight hours is our full day rate and um, our full day uh, time frame, And four hours is our, is our half day. So it's 95 and 65 and with that, again, remember, our, our care is very, very specialized, and all of our, our caregivers are trained in caring for people with, with dementia. We do have an RN, too. I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but we do have an RN on site all day long at, at each center. That was one of, or that is one of the staples of, of the Glenner Center, Dr. Glenner and Joy decided that we were going to have an RN on staff, and, and we maintain that to this, to this day. Um, the other important thing for people all over the country to look at, and, and I will explain the, the staffing ratio at the Glenner, um, that's a very, very important feature. So our um, participant to staff ratio is five to one, and that is, that's very, very low, which is great. So people are getting really, really hands-on care for, for that cost. So I'm saying all of these details. So for $95 a day, um, sometimes people say, oh my gosh, $95 a day, that's so much. But it, it actually works out to be under $12 an hour, which is a lot less than some people pay for, for teenage babysitters, for example. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to um, take a short break and we're going to come back and talk about how these adult day, what do we, I don't want to call them adult day care, adult day programs work and the costs involved and how, you know, how you might be able to pay for that. So we're going to take a short break. Um, we're talking with Lisa Tybersky from Glenner.org. And we'll be right back. 
How do you tackle a storage room? My name is Lisa Woodruff, and I am a professional organizer and productivity expert. And today, I want to give you three tips on how to tackle your storage room. It's one box at a time, my friends, one box at a time. So here are the best ways to tackle that box. Number one, carry it upstairs into your kitchen, preferably. Put it on a countertop so it's easy to see what's inside the box. Step two, you need to empty it. Take every single thing out of the box and look at it on your kitchen counter or kitchen table. Some will be trash, some will be donatable, and some of the items will go to other family members. Whatever you decide you're going to keep, I want you to put it in a new box with a label. That could be a new cardboard box, but I would prefer you use something that is waterproof, like a clear plastic box with a lid, and label it. If you have items to give other family members, don't put them back in your storage room. Make sure they go to the family members. One box at a time, you can do this. Check out the Organize 365 podcast for more on how to get organized as you rock your retirement. Welcome back. We are talking with Lisa Tyberski at the Glenner Center, and you can go to www.glenner.org to find out more about it. Lisa, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Kathy. Now, before we went to break, we were talking about the Glenner Center and what the cost is. Basically, it's $95 a day currently. And we were comparing that a little bit and, and saying that it can be used in conjunction with home care. How much does home care cost? I mean, you were saying it's $95 a day for an adult day program such as your your own. But how much how does that compare to one-on-one care? One-on-one care usually from from what I've heard from the other agencies or the agencies that I'm familiar with in, in San Diego are roughly $23 an hour upwards to $27, $28 an hour probably depending on the, you know, the experience of the caregiver, but that's roughly the range of, of what you will find. Um, a nurse, if you had an RN come to your house, again, which we do have at all of our centers, that's going to be much, much more. Uh, most, most home care agencies, though, do have, you know, they have caregivers, not RNs coming to the house on a regular basis. And, and again, that would be anywhere from 23 to $28 an hour or something like that. Wow, that's a big difference. Isn't it? I mean, yeah, it really is a big difference. That you know, it really is a big difference. And 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 again, I want to be sure to point out that you know, home care isn't a, a wonderful option for many people. But my goal to share with your audience that there is another option. You know, there there definitely is another option of of daycare or day program. Again, right? We should say. Um, and again, combining it with the home care agent, home care agencies. I'm very passionate about this. I, like I said, when I, I had no idea that such a thing existed, such a great idea. I think you get better care when you're looking for an adult day program. What are some of the things that you should look for? Well, yeah, again, if you are looking for a day program and your loved one does have dementia, you do want to ask if they specialize or or at least have the ability to care for people with dementia. Caring for someone with dementia is much different than caring for for someone with, you know, a, a broken hip or um, you know, another another ailment. It's it's very specific. And so you want to find out if their caregivers have any training in caring for people with, with dementia and dealing with any of the behaviors associated. Uh, you also want to ask about the staff to participant ratio. I mentioned that that earlier that that makes a big difference because that will tell you how much time uh, the caregiver will be able to spend with your your parent or or your spouse. So that would be that would be a big question to ask. And then I would ask how many total participants are in the center on any given day. Again, you know we we keep our center census smaller on purpose so it's not overwhelming. I know if I had brought my mom to a center with a hundred people. In a, in a big room, it would be extremely, extremely overwhelming, and I, I think would just make uh, would make the situation worse. In, in my opinion, um, you know, it might work for some people, but uh, I just think you know, dementia is very, very, very specific, and I, I think the the uh, the size of of the room and the area and the number of people there is a um, is a, a big question to consider or a big issue to consider rather. And then I would ask again if they have a nurse on staff. Um, and if they don't have an RN all day, 
like the Glenner does, you know, make sure that they do have an RN that is, is available and ask if they can manage medications. That's also a big consideration because I know, you know, a lot of times people with dementia are taking medications for the dementia, but oftentimes they're taking medication for other um, other conditions that they have. So it can be very confusing for a family member to keep track of. And um, oftentimes you will ask if the person took the medication and because of their condition, they oftentimes cannot tell you. So if you have your loved one at a center during the day and there is someone there that can help manage the medications and keep track for the family, that's a huge, huge benefit. So those would probably be the the big ones that I would look for in a, in a day program. Okay. Well, that, that sounds really good. Now, now I'm going to talk about a couple of other things. And for my listeners, if you're hearing that in the background, that's my bird, Mr. Grant. Sorry about that. <laughs> What's your bird's name, Mr. Grant? I know. I know, Mr. Grant. That's cute. <laughs> Thank you. Cute. Yeah, when I first got him, um, kind of bird? he's a Moluccan cockatoo. So if you're old enough to remember the show Beretta, he's one of those birds, oh, but he's yeah. pink. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And sometimes great. he likes to talk to my listeners. <laughs> okay, so back to the show. Back to the show. Um, okay, so I'm taking my mom and I'm dropping, you know, I'm either dropping her off myself or I'm having a caregiver drop her off and she's going to be there for eight hours. Do I need to pack a lunch? How does that work? No, actually, good. I'm glad that you asked that too. Um, we have meals delivered every day by Volunteers of America. They bring our hot meals in. Uh, we do a breakfast too, which is more of a continental breakfast, mush, muffins and toast, things like that. But then the hot meals are brought in uh, every day. So no, you do not have to pack a lunch. Okay. Well, that that's good. Now, do most places have, like, what if mom is gluten-free or something like that? Are, are there exceptions for that? Or is it just, here's your peanut butter and jelly sandwich? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, not at all. So we will work with, you know, we have a representative at Volunteers of America, of course, that we will work with. And if someone has an allergy or sensitivity, we will certainly accommodate or, or Volunteers of America will work to accommodate that. And then, you know, another thing, um, you brought up the meals too, is, you know, a lot of times people with dementia will have difficulty eating. And we certainly have caregivers that will be able to help help them with, with eating and then uh, tasks like in the bathroom and, and things like that. So um, that would be another, you know, that'd be another consideration too, to ask um, back to your previous question about, you know, what, what would you want to look for in a day program? Okay. Do I have to pay extra for that if they need help eating or going to the bathroom? No, no. And, and, you know, a lot of assisted living communities too, we haven't talked too much about that yet, but um, a lot of assisted living communities will have a base rate. And then depending on the amount of care that, that your loved one requires, there will be sort of a tiered uh, payment schedule. Ours is not like that. It is a flat rate, flat rate of 95 or 65, depending on full day or half day. So all of, you know, all of that specialized care is included in the price. Oh, that's so good. Do, do you have people that live in assisted living that come over or is it, it's you're either going to do one or the other because assisted living tends to be a bit pricier? Yeah, actually we do. So so the way that we work with residential communities, which again are needed, you know, very often it does come to be a time where you do need placement in a residential care facility. And there are many great facilities out there. Where we come into play is, you know, it, it, even though the communities are, are great and beautiful and provide excellent care, a lot of times the family members have a really hard time with that. They 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 just, there's the guilt factor. They feel very, very guilty about placing their loved one in a community. And so that's where we can come in while they're thinking about it. So if they're not quite ready, uh, but they are looking for care, that that means there is an issue. And that means that their loved one does need care. So a day program is a perfect first step in the care continuum. So I, I do want to say that in, in relation to, you know, people looking for placement. And then secondly, and a, uh, sorry, in a long-winded answer to your question, um, we do have people come from assisted livings that will come for Usually for like four, well, some for full day, but but some for half day. So if they're in assisted living and and they require more socialization than is being provided at the community, we do have the communities will bring them over to our centers. So that was a great question. Okay. Now, what if I don't have a lot of money and I really don't know how I'm going to pay for this? Like, 
what, how can I pay for a center like this? Like, are there options out there? Can I use insurance? How does it work? Does Medicare pay? Medicare does not pay. Mm. Um, Medicare does not does not cover it. We do accept uh, private pay, of course, long term care insurance. If your long term care policy uh, covers adult daycare, then we will accept that as a form of payment. We also accept Medi Cal in two of our centers. Our Hillcrest Center is not licensed for Medi Cal, but our Encinitas and Chula Vista prog- uh, programs are licensed for Medi Cal. For people that are living in other states, Medi Cal is California's version of Medicaid. So you can ask your center if they accept Medicaid. So I'm sorry, go ahead, continue. (laughs) So we also do accept VA benefits too. So the VA has a program for adult day healthcare and um, it will, so we'll cover an adult day healthcare program. That is something that, you know, you'll want to contact the VA and find out if if you're eligible. Uh, From what I understand, there is a small copay that is assigned, a daily copay that's assigned by the VA. And I believe it is income based, but that's all determined by the B, by the VA. But we will accept that as as benefits or as compensation, so VA benefits. You can pay out of pocket. You can potentially get assistance from the VA. You might be able to get assistance from your state's Medicaid program. And if you have long term care insurance, it might cover it as well. And of course, you can write a check, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Are there contracts? Yep. Like if I if I want to come in and test it out, do I have to sign like a two year contract or can I test it out? No, no, no. No. You um you can come in you do have to have an assessment. Uh, so you you know, we do have to have you meet with our center director and our nurse. And um, you know, there is a sort of an assessment or value, evaluation um period and paperwork. So it, it isn't just a, a drop off, you know, whenever whenever it works. It it does have to be a planned schedule. We do ask that our participants come one full day a week or two half days a week. And that is certainly for the the care of the individual with dementia and uh, just to keep consistency. You know, if you only come once a month, it's sort of like starting over. So we try to keep some, you know, consistency. So that's, that's the only requirement. So again, an assessment period. And um, again, in answer to your question, yes, they can come in and, and do a, a two-hour time where they, where they try it out. Okay. And try it out and I, I completely also. understand too why you'd want the consistency because your family members are going to make friends. They're going to get used to seeing people. And if you just want to come once a month, it's going to be like a new thing and scary. So people with dementia, you know, it can be scary for them, right? Yeah. And, you know, in all honesty, I mean, even though our, our program is, is so beneficial, I mean, we do, there is, we do have a little bit of an adjustment period for or some people have a, a bit of an adjustment period. You know, it is new and it's new people and new caretakers and new environments. You know, there might be a week or two where they're just kind of uneasy. So if you get through that initial adjustment period, you know, then you, you hate to, you'd have to just start all over again if you didn't come for another month. So yeah, I mean, the consistency is just hugely, hugely important. Yeah. So, you know, I, I hope that my stepmother takes advantage of adult day programs. She doesn't live in San Diego, but um, she lives in Florida. He's getting, you know, more and more obvious that that he has dementia. You know, he's he has Parkinson's, so he's got Parkinson's related Alzheimer's. Parkinson's, dementia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And um, you can definitely, you know, when I see him once a year, I can definitely see the change. And it's hard for people, you know, it's hard. I mean, especially hard for her because she's the primary caregiver, but it's hard on everybody, you know, the whole family. I'm sure that that's what you found with your family as well. Well, it is hard. Uh, It's hard on everyone in, in different ways. I mean, you know, it, it was extremely difficult on my dad who was now the caregiver of his spouse, you know, and if, if you just think about that as a relationship change, just, just that, and you know, to go from being being a, a spouse with someone, and then now all of a sudden you're caring for them, and then as a child, you know, from my perspective, uh, you know, I'll never forget when when my mom asked if I was her mother. I mean, those kinds of things are. I mean, think about that. I mean, that's just it's just so upsetting on so many levels. You know, emotionally because of questions like that. Physically, you know, if you're a, if you're the spouse and you're also more, you know, you're in your 70s or 80s, it's it's difficult physically to care for, you know, for a loved one. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's draining. 
it's draining on um, just so, so, so many levels. So that's why just to get a, get a little bit of a break, you know, if you can, if you can care for your loved one in the evenings and on the weekends, or you want to add some home care, um, day, day programs, it's just, it's just such a benefit, such a benefit. So I, I hope that you're, you know, they can find something in, in Florida that's similar and that would be, that would be fantastic. I hope so, too. I mean, they live in the Villages, which is the largest um, over 55 community in the United States. They have Mm -hmm. something like... What's it called? The Villages. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think they have like 131,000 people that live there. They have their own Medicare program. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And while I was there, so I went there for Christmas and, and saw my dad, my stepmom, and my sister and her husband were there as well. And... I I went ahead. I have this little freebie called the ABCs of Alzheimer's, which was basically the information that I got from Kristen Cursado, I think, um, who used to be a um, a weather girl. Oh yeah, yeah, so- yeah. Kristen Cursado. Yeah, she. I actually did an interview with her on KOSI, gosh, oh. a year and a half ago or so. And I- yeah, I know her story. Her mom had Alzheimer's. Yeah, Louis right body. Itself. Louis yeah. body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or dementia. Okay, yeah. And she took care of her, I think, if I remember the story correctly, that she, she ended up leaving her job to yep. care for her mom mm-hmm. and Absolutely. went back east. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, I should have yeah, her on the show. Yeah, caregiving is a full-time job. Yeah, I, really I should actually is. have her on the show. But I had gone to a presentation that she did. I think it was for the Caregiver Coalition here in San Diego. And I wrote down what she said. And she had this... ABCs of Alzheimer's, I think. And so I, I adapted that. I gave, I give her credit on it and I had emailed her and let her know that I was doing this. But for people who do have a family member that has dementia, you can go to rockyourretirement.com slash ABC and you can download the ABCs of Al's, uh dementia. I forget what I called it, but it's basically how do you handle it? What things do you need to know? Like I wouldn't have known that you should not approach somebody with dementia from behind, you know, like just tap them on the shoulder. Hi, mom, because they might get scared. They don't, they don't know what's going on, right? And they can't. Absolutely. S- yeah. So there are lots of things that you don't know about that are simple once you read it once you understand it you're like oh yeah that makes sense like you know this lisa don't argue with somebody with dementia don't don't tell them that it's 2017 not 1957 <laughs> you know? exactly and you know that is so it's so important for example and and i had no idea about this i i know now but if you have uh let's say you know a black and white checkered floor so you have big black squares in the floor right a person with dementia thinks that that is a big black hole. They think they're going to fall in that. I have no idea. So if you notice, I mean, somebody with dementia or like a welcome mat, for example, you know, a dark colored welcome mat, that looks like a big cavernous hole and they're, they're scared of that. So those are the types of things. Once you know that, then you'd be like, okay, you know, you, you, you tried to eliminate that in your, in your environment. And, uh, you know, another thing, like you said, arguing with someone with, with dementia, there's a lot of people that will say, you know, no, mom, don't you remember I told you that? And it, it doesn't do anyone any good to to do that because obviously the person doesn't remember that they just told you that or they wouldn't have said it. Right. You know, so it's really, really hard for the caregiver, though, to just listen to it over and over and over. I mean, caregivers are human, right? So it's very frustrating. But if you do know that the best way is to not argue and not correct them. For example, you, you know, like you just mentioned, you know, no, it's not 1957, but, you know, I've heard instances where someone will say, well, I'm going to go see my mom. And meanwhile, they're 80 years old, so their mom has passed away. And so the person will say, no, you know, your mom died 30 years ago. And it's as if they're reliving the death all over again. So there's, there's no reason to say, to say that, you know, you, you tell them they relive the death and then. An hour later, they ask to go see their mom, and then you say that no, your mom passed away. They relive it again. So there's there's really no no point. And and I'm certainly not a, a dementia. I'm not an, an expert, as I'm not a nurse or I'm not an expert in that. But I have learned that that isn't the way you know to to talk to someone with dementia. I think the best way is to really just distract and start talking about something um, something different, right? You know, rather than having live over or relive 
a negative situation. So, um, you know, and, and along those lines, one of the things to look for in a day, day program or anywhere in your community is to look for support groups. The Glenner Center offers several support groups in San Diego specifically for caregivers of a loved one with dementia. And those can be a huge help, a huge help for people because you're in a room where you're talking to, you know, 10 or 15 other people that are going through primarily the same exact thing as you are. And while we have a facilitator in all of our, you know, all of our groups that are our center directors actually, so they're very knowledgeable, but I I think the, the benefit comes from the people that are attending talking to each other and sharing all of the stories and, and things that they've gone through themselves. And, uh, you know, what happened when you went to this doctor? What happened when you, you know, went to this community, et cetera. So those can be a huge, huge, huge help for people is to attend a support group. Well, thank you for bringing that up. And on that note, I can't believe the time has flown by, but we are running out of time. Oh, we're done already? We're I done. know, I know. <laughs> I should totally have you come back. But um, so before we go, I just, what is the one piece of advice that you would give to my listeners um, so that they would have a good retirement? And I know that you focus on the Glenner, but it can be about anything. Well, I think I will keep it about Glenner and the topic that we, you know, are talking about, I think if you are someone that has recently retired and now you're finding yourself caring for a loved one with dementia, don't be afraid to seek help so that you still can, you know, enjoy parts of your, of your retirement. Um, You know, so many people just, they just don't want to seek professional help and it can be just such a huge huge, huge, huge help in, in to keeping your, you know, quality of life better and, you know, enjoying your retirement while you're still caring for someone with dementia. I guess that would be my, my biggest advice. So. Okay, good. Now, how can my listeners contact you if they want more information about the Glenner Center? Well, they can go to our website, which is www.glenner.org, or they can certainly contact me directly, which is ltyberski at glenner.org. Or there is um, another general email on our website, which is information at glenner.org. So even if people are um, are not sure that they need daycare, and but they really don't know what they need, they can give us a call and we'll be happy to connect them with other resources in the community, other wonderful home care agencies or, or um, assisted living communities, placement agencies. We do have a list of all kinds of preferred uh, providers in the community. So please don't hesitate to give us a call. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lisa, for coming on the show. And for my listener, if you want... Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, thank you. And we did mention the ABCs of Alzheimer's. If you want that freebie, just go to rockyourretirement.com forward slash ABC. And for my listeners, we will see you next time on Rock Your Retirement. Thanks for listening to the Rock Your Retirement show. If you are rocking your retirement or know someone who would make a great guest on our show, please send us an email at podcast at rockyourretirement.com. 